Here on our channel, the number one priority is what you want to see. And you want to see the Audi RS5 Sportback. Yeah, that's why we have it here today. Let's go. In the front, the A5 in general has this design line that goes all the way to the front grille from every single direction. Really interesting. The RS5 then, sinister here with the glossy black. And you can also get the Audi rings in black if you go for a black design package. RS5 badge, strong lower spoiler. You can also get the carbon fiber accentuations if you like. And then Matrix LED are from standard equipment and what a cool daytime running light. An option you can see it here with the blue accentuations, there's also the laser light available with a dark background. And these are the cascading turning indicators. Always a great show. Guys, this is one of the rare occasions where the car does not move, where the camera does not move, but you could leave the picture for 10 minutes and it would still be beautiful. Enjoy the length of 4 meters 78, 15 foot 7 or 188 inches for the Sportback. That means 2.5 inches or 6 centimeters longer in wheelbase than the RS5 Coupé. The Coupé of course and the two-door. Here the Sportback, the four-door version but still with a very central roofline and strong shoulder area. RS5 badge here then lower area here with the carbon fiber spoiler in this carbon fiber package we get 19 or optional 20 inch wheels these are the 20 inch wheels in black really massive styling 6000 euros extra for the carbon ceramic brakes in the front really cool yeah in this segment you only get it in the front but trust me that's enough <laughs> then Carbon uh, fiber here also for the side mirrors. So a lot of cool design elements, black frames around. Yeah, I can just say in the styling, pure awesomeness. Today here with a fixed roof, but you can also get a panoramic glass roof. And the coupe you could also get with a CFRP roof, so carbon fiber reinforced plastics. In the rear, more modern signature for the tail lamps. We also have a carbon fiber spoiler in this optional carbon package, black Audi rings because of the black pack, RS5 logo and then the lower part really cool with this diffuser style, honeycomb structure on the inside. There is a sports exhaust as base but this is the optional sports exhaust. You can see it because that's the black styling and then there's a valve also on the inside and you already heard some of the sound experience. Then, as for the suspension, you get a fixed RS Sport suspension or the DRC. It's a dynamic ride control and this has then three different levels. Stiffer, normal or really comfortable. It's not adaptive in each mode, but fixed three modes. And that, of course, makes the riding at least a little bit adjustable. We also have it here today. And not to miss the cascading turning indicators here at the rear. Yeah, there it is, <laughs> the V6, 2.9 liter by turbo, 450 horsepower, 3.9 seconds is the acceleration figure. Quattro all-wheel drive, but with a rear wheel bias, 40-60% is the standard distribution. I think we can live with that. First of all, door closing sound. Yeah, really solid for a vehicle that has frameless doors. Alcantara at the instant of the doors, then carbon fiber inserts here as well. Great build quality and lovely sporty features like these RS5 entry badges. And big RS logo on the floor mats. Yes, that's what we want to have. 
And of course, my favorite feature, the Alcantara steering wheel. I see the comments coming, yeah, it's not durable and so on. Trust me, it's more durable than you think. And there are also cleaning tips for Alcantara steering wheels and you will enjoy it every single moment you drive it. Better grip, it's not cold in winter, it's not sweaty in summer, it's just awesome in a sporty vehicle. Every racing driver uses an Alcantara steering wheel. There's a reason for that. Now we're getting inside and you know one of my rules when entering one of my vehicles is you always have to use a shoe tap to keep the floor mats clean. I'm always cleaning the floor mats like all over the place. Yeah, I know, maybe also weird again, but that's how I treat the cars. Then, <laughs> seating position here, when I put it in the lowest position, with the model meters 86 or 6 foot 1, still leaves headroom. When you go for the panoramic roof, you have a little less headroom, but still sufficient. Interior overview, soft touch here, but here a little bit of mixed elements and styling and gaps. Hmm, that can be done better, meanwhile, I think, but cool build quality here the carbon fiber in that quattro logo and my favorite clicking sounds climate unit elements this is my all-time favorite ac unit ever i hope it never goes away but we've seen it uh, sometimes it will maybe go away and be a touchscreen also i hope it won't this is really so straightforward but so high class in how it feels and also with the metal knurling around here then with this hovering function so um yeah that's also a fancy detail for sure instruments you start with seven inch small screen and analog dials these are the full 12.3 inch digital instruments and here since the facelift in the middle part you've already seen it 10.1 inch screen new one with touchscreen the mmi knob is gone in the middle part but you can easily reach it here and there's a good menu structure also soon more deals to that lower part with usb a supply 12 foot power supply start stop button as well and then adaptive cup holders so small cubby hole right here and you have this converter automatic gearbox shift and lever with a nice alcantara covering and for the passenger if it's like thomas your mu music is too loud again and the passenger can tune it down. Hmm, maybe they should, they should leave this knob, right? Hmm. <laughs> then, here the armrest, soft covering. You put it up and then there's USB-C supply now and an inductive charging mat. This B&O optional sound system is really cool. I can tell you, and this is by the way, we are one of my all-time favorite trans songs. You should tune into that. I just love this song and I love this sound system. Awesome really really cool i would recommend it once again back to the apple carplay menu it's a good integration and i think once again straightforward menu yes the mmi mod knob is gone but you can very well live with this touchscreen system the rear view camera is so far so good in one way but in another way the resolution meanwhile could be better now getting on the inside in the rear and whoa <laughs> this was close we have it in slow-mo oh wow that was really close. That's the thing about the sporty looking vehicles. However, if you think about the comparison to the RS5 Coupe, here, this thing is, I can still sit here. Again, remember, this here two and a half inches or six centimeters longer in the wheelbase than the Coupe. Not only in the overhang, real the wheelbase, and that's why I can sit here, whereas it's not possible in the Coupe. So, and it's more or less okay. It's, of course, a little cozy here sporty seating position but also headroom wise it works for tall adults so this car is indeed for tall adult proof soft touch at the inside of the door and again the nice alcantara so once again top in the build quality and we have isofix at the outside of the seats and we have these cup holders which are really massive can be folded out like this middle console two usb a chargers and also a rear climate unit you can also get rear seat heating in the trunk the cool thing here with the sportback is this fastback opening so very good access and you can see here no problem with the cabin trolley already fold one of the seats there's also ski hatch available underneath some more space and they put the battery here in the lower well, lower back part for the balancing reason for the weight and then here the normal length is yeah just a little over a meter or a little over 40 inches and the width the same almost just a little under 
a meter or under 40 inches and the height here to the cover we are at 20 inches or about 50 centimeters so really a very well usable sports vehicle and you can see how wide it really opens and child safety test yeah that's also very well done and here once again really very well accessible almost like driving in an estate Welcome to Thomas' Active Driving Lounge with the Audi RS5 Sportback today. So in the comparison, the RS5 Coupe with us, the BMW M4. Here then, we can use the Audi Drive, Drive Select, but of course, in this case, RS mode at the steering wheel. And it's not too wet yet, so we can even use the RS2 mode, of course. Please don't attempt. And we'll start at 35 kilometers an hour and see how it goes. That's 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour. Holy mother of... Whew. That is awesome. And I mean, it was, of course, kind of extreme, but at the same time, so calm and collected. And now here at 200 kilometers or 125 miles an hour, lane change like nothing. Suspension is set on a stiffer tone. And I mean, wow. Noise installation is still quite good, not of course a comparable level to an Audi S8 we had recently, but wow, how much I'm controlling of this vehicle. This is a pure driving machine, and now hard on the brakes here. Yeah, whoa, what a braking performance, awesome. Actually, the brakes were almost more impressive than the acceleration even, so that was really super cool. We have the DRC mounted here, as I told you earlier, dynamic ride control. And this means it's not the fixed RS sport suspension, but here it's not adaptive in a way that it really not varies in the mode, but you can pick three different modes and these three different modes are fixed then. So comfort, auto and dynamic. And when I use the RS modes here at the steering wheel, we are in this fixer or stiffer dynamic mode. And this really brings us more performance here when, you know, cornering and, of course, keeping it stiff and highway speed and so on. That's really cool. But, of course, less comfort than in everyday driving life. And I let myself drop back a little bit here so I can lower the window and use also the shifting pedals. Show some of the sound. Ooh. Nice, nice, nice. So this 2.9 liter V6 by turbo with the Quattro all-wheel drive. And this is still here, the classic Quattro all-wheel drive. We all want to have 40, 60% distribution as a, uh, as a standard. And then it varies a little bit, but definitely always we will buy it. And here getting off the motorway, we'll soon head on again. It feels like nothing. This car feels so stable and situated on the road. It's just pure joy to drive. and. To me, always a good thing about the Audi RS models is that they still have some kind of comfort compromise. So if you compare them to Mercedes AMG top models and the BMW M top models, they are even stiffer as for suspension setup and so on. And you might want to have that, but maybe not. So yes, the S5, for example, is still more comfortable, of course, than this one. So the really, really the question is, how much comfort, what, you know, what is your compromise between sportiness and comfort and in which direction do you want to move it? And let's go into the RS mode once again, RS2 mode also, because this sets everything on the sporting mode. And what happens when we are already at about 80 kilometers an hour, like 50 miles an hour and accelerate it out? And goodbye, everyone. Hitting the red limiter, now I'm gonna stop it again, 200 kilometers an hour, in the corner. Lane change once again. Rain is picking up a little bit, so I have to be careful. It's really awesome. I love this Alcantara steering wheel. It's giving me so much control of the vehicle, so much balance handling. The interface between driver and vehicle is awesome. I have a perfect feeling of the steering command, the steering ratio, and the progressiveness of the steering. So, 
I have a very fine-tuned feeling for what I'm doing. At the same time, I don't have to steer a lot. And that's really helping in both in sporty driving and also controlling this car in your everyday driving life. To me, it's just perfect. One of the best steerings there is on the market. Yeah, so I really have to say, great sporty driving on the motorway. Such a cool motorway vehicle. If you compare it to the bigger segment, like Audi A6, A7, or even in the A8, of course, here you have somewhat less comfort, but you feel so much more agility, such so much more balance handling and less weight. If you ask me, Sportback or Coupe, go for the Sportback. If you're not only using it alone or with two people, if you need that rear bench. And of course, this Fastback opening is so practical, so you can have like a estate-like practicability while having this driving experience here. And it does have a slightly longer wheelbase here, the Sportback, than the Coupe. Yeah, and therefore the Coupe also, you know, feels a little sportier indeed. But it's not the world, it doesn't feel like a completely different car. So in most of the cases, I really have to say the more, wi the, the more wise decision is to pick the Sportback because this car here can still combine so much. If you want it more extreme, then Get the M3, M4, and the C63 with the pure rear-wheel drive. That is like, you know, the more extreme feeling. But if you like this super balanced feeling, then this is here the vehicle for you. This car is super sporty, but it's one of the smoothest sporty vehicles. That's, I think, the strength of it. So I'll leave a little bit here to enjoy. Now, how much understeering do we really get? Let's see. A little bit maybe, but I mean, still really cool. Of course, we cannot accelerate it out that much and then have like rear wheel spin, but still. Yeah, it's really very, very well done. What a joyride. I hope you enjoyed it as well. And now to our conclusion for today with the Audi RS5 Sportback. I mean, what a design, really awesome to me. One of the most beautiful Audi models overall. And here with the black rings and the black design package, even more sinister look. And of course the Tango Red, really strong color. One of the coolest colors you can pick this vehicle in. Sportback au Coupe. To me, rather the Sportback, yes, the Coupe looks even sportier, but the Sportback is so much more versatile, especially with this Fastback opening. And also, of course, and even more on the interior. You don't have any compromise in driving. It still drives super, super sporty. But the cool thing about the RS models at Audi is that they still deliver you some kind of comfort. And I think they have really found a good compromise. If you want it even more comfortable, go for the Audi S5. This is also a very, very good choice. And if I think about everyday driving life, it would probably also be the better choice. And also price performance wise, this here, as I said earlier, more than 80K, somewhat in the entry price and about $120,000 or euros when you put it in a full spec, even with the additional sporty features. Interior build quality, really awesome. Since the facelift, more with the touchscreen, but you still have a lot of hard buttons left. So I think it's also a good compromise in this respect. Yeah, the Alcantara seats, if you can get them, would be an even better choice. Alcantara steering wheel is awesome. So overall, what a cool driving experience. And I hope to see you also soon in our comparison with the Audi RS5 Coupe and the BMW M4 in the new generation. If you watch this video at a later stage, the video is probably already online. And then we will also link it in the video description. Thank you for watching today and I hope to see you next time.